Hey, I'm Ross Duffer. I'm Matt Duffer. We're creators of Stranger Things, and we're going to break down the trailer for you. You've broken everything. So it's been a while. So all you really need to know, I think, coming into season four is that the groups are sp split up. So, you know, they're not together anymore. And I think that's the thing that causes the biggest effect this year in terms of the fact that they're not all together. And that causes a lot of sort of emotional conflict and just, you know, difficulty in the fact that they are as spread out as they are. So they can't, it's, it's difficult for them to solve the issues of what's happening in Hawkins when they're so far away. So you've got, uh, Eleven has moved in with the buyers. So you've got Joyce and you've got Will and you've got Jonathan and Ellen. They're in California. They're in our sort of ET setting. And then you've got in Hawkins, we still have Steve and Nancy and Mike is there for a little bit, but then you can see that he obviously goes to California. We have Lucas, we have Robin, we have Erica, and then uh, all alone, all by himself in the middle of nowhere, you have Hopper in Russia. So those are our three groups. This is our Game of Thrones season. Very big in terms of how spread out it is. You've broken everything. So you're hearing back now, this is our big new baddie this year. You know, it felt like right away we wanted to introduce the idea that there is a major new threat. We've always wanted to do our, whatever version of a Freddy Krueger or a Pinhead or a Pennywise, because those were the, the monsters, the villains supernatural villains, I guess, that terrified us the most when we were growing up. And it felt like it's something we've wanted to do since season two. Uh, it just took us this long to get there, but this is something we've been wanting to do for, for a long time. The season Vecna has a very specific and very dark point of, point of view. A lot of our characters are dealing with trauma that, is, that has happened to them. And a lot of the season is, is about that. We didn't want to play the season as just brushing off the events of what happened. And even though last season we saw it as our sort of our summer blockbuster, it, it took obviously a pretty dark turn at the end with Hopper being taken and, and seemingly dead and, and the death of Billy. And so we really wanted those events to resonate throughout this season. It's also, you know, it's like our Hellraiser line. It sounds like something Penhead would say, <laughs> it does. which I like. Your suffering is almost Dear Billy, I don't know if you can even hear this. I'm sure this is gonna be a shock to people, but this is in episode four, which is titled Dear Billy, <laughs> where this scene takes place. And that is what that episode really is about. I mean, it's, and, and that's why I like that the trailer is starting off with Max because Sadie, first of all, gives an incredible performance this year. And so much of the season is about Max. So we open this season with her struggling with that and her trying to navigate that. And Max, on the other hand, is also someone who doesn't easily open up to people. So a lot of what she's dealing with, she's struggling with internally. And she shut a lot of people out, which makes it even that much more difficult. And that kind of reaches a point in season four where she's able to kind of finally come to terms with what she's been dealing with for the past year or so. Hawkins really is still reeling from the events of season three. And there's this sense that's been growing over the years where so many bad things has, have happened in this town that people are starting to question what's going on here. And, you know, the government has attempted to sort of push things under the rug, but that mall fire and all of that was too big really for anyone to ignore. So there's this growing sense of there is something wrong with this town some people even saying that it's cursed as you see there's a body bag here not everyone is is going to survive all this darkness it's not just occurring in the upside down it's it's leaking now into into our world and it's infecting the town itself not literally but you know psychologically it's affecting all of our characters lucas is on the basketball team now and something we really want to do this season is see how people react when they're in a new environment how our characters as they're going into high school certainly for us that was a moment where we saw some of our friends move on to you know sports teams and make other friends and we grew distant from them and so that's really a conflict early on in this season is that can our core group of friends, even as they go into different activities and make new friends in high school, can they keep that core friendship alive? I mean, yeah, you got to keep in mind, this is Indiana. We grew up in North Carolina where like college basketball was everything. And Ross and I just were not, uh, how do I say this? 
you know, athletically gifted. So, and we liked movies, we liked arts. And, and so when you had, you know, it was hard if you weren't able to join a sports team, it was hard to find a place in high school. And so high school was a really hard time for us. And I think, you know, as we had some friends who were more athletically gifted, I mean, finding a place among these more popular kids in the sports team. So we wanted to show what that tension felt like. We wanted to explore that dynamic with our kids. This is a big turning point here in that it's something we've always wanted to do, which was to see Eleven in school trying to fit in with the real world because prior to this you know season one was just her even learning what the outside world was like season two she was mostly stuck in hopper's cabin because she couldn't go out and so this is really the first instance of her trying to fit in and that was really exciting to us and this is again someone who doesn't really know how to interact in the real world. She doesn't understand social cues. And so we wanted to see how Eleven was gonna to attempt to fit in. And obviously it's not gonna be smooth sailing right away. And so that really is how her journey begins this season. And, and also the fact that she, at the end of season three, she's lost her power. So she's, and that was so core to who she is and her identity. It's kind of a double whammy for her. It's like, who is she? without these powers, is she anyone special? And then you know, she's struggling with that aspect. I don't have my powers. The clock obviously plays, as you can see, because we've it's already in, been in the trailer twice. It plays an important role this season, but it re it's a really core part of the mystery that our Hawkins group is trying to solve. So I don't want to give away too much, but other than to say that this clock plays a very, very important role moving forward. And you don't want to see the clock. It's I'll not, just say that. If you, if you see the clog, that's not great. Well, Hopper, uh, as you can see here, is not doing great. In fact, uh, yeah, if anyone's doing worse than L, it's, it's Hopper, I would say. He's in, he's, he's in a wor worse condition here uh, in, the, in the freezing wastelands of a Kamchatka prison somewhere in the middle of nowhere in Russia. He's not doing well. He's completely isolated. He's totally alone and there seems to be no way out for him. A lot of the Russian storyline was filmed in Lithuania, actually. There were some interior sets that were shot in Atlanta, but we spent quite some time in Lithuania, which I think hopefully adds to the authenticity and scope of the Hopper storyline. I mean, it has a lot of that sort of, you know, Eastern European aesthetic. It looks a lot like Russia. They shot Chernobyl there. That's why we went there. Elle is really just is trying and failing to fit into the real world. Joyce, meanwhile, has a new job. She's a telemarketer, but her life is really thrown into turmoil. And this moment here, which you're seeing, it's from the first episode when she receives a package in the mail and there are a bunch of stamps indicating that it came from Russia. And this is really the beginning of a very epic journey uh, for Joyce this season. So here we're seeing the Creel house for the first time. We've wanted to do the haunted house thing, I think, for a while. So, you know, I mean, every year we're trying to do something different. This was a more horror leaning season. We had our kids there, obviously in high school, and it just felt very natural that they should be in a horror film. We love Paul Reiser, we love Dr. Owen, so we've always wanted to bring him back. And this, this season, he does play a major, major role. We're also huge fans of the film Diner, so we always like putting Paul Reiser in a diner. It's kind of like a little ongoing joke that we have with Paul. So there's this huge scene that happens to take place in a diner and there are no good diners is the problem in Atlanta. But this, we were shooting the California per portion of the show out in Albuquerque. And finally we found like a good classic diner. And then we have this epic, like five minute scene in a diner. Anyway, I think it's when we first fell in love with Paul. Reiser. Well, probably first fell in love with Paul Reiser, probably seeing aliens. But then shortly after that, Discover Diner. If you haven't seen Diner, check it out. We always love our monsters, and so we wanted a new, different type of monster here. And so we've introduced Demo Bats, which are, you know, we've got our Demo Gorgon, we've got our Demo Dogs, and so this is the flying version of that. And, you know, maybe alone, one of them is not too dangerous, but when there's a bunch of them, it can get very, very scary very, very quickly. So we're very excited for for people to meet our our demo bats it's kind of got a gothic vampire quality to it this is a huge sequence you're seeing it's something we've always wanted to do which is sort of a gladiator style sequence with a demogorgon and just the idea of seeing a demogorgon in the snow is something that we were excited about and have been excited about for about four years now which i think is why we wrote him 
into Russia or hinted that there was a demo war in Russia at the end of season three. And this is just a little sneak at what I think is a pretty crazy sequence uh, later on in the season. Our production designer, Chris Trujillo, built this incredible set. We call it the demo pit. It was always awesome, but it was it was all we kept asking him to make it bigger and bigger and bigger until he was like, eventually we're just like, there's just not any more stage space. It's as big as we can. But the reason I wanted it so big is we just really wanted to see this guy move. So he's flying around like like right here. You're getting a sense of what it looks like for a Democrat and to run. You're getting a sense of what it looks like to, to jump. So you get to see a lot more of that in this sequence. So it was just this huge, amazing playground. There's a lot of build up to it. There's a shot here in the trailer. We were happy they made it in, which is of a new our new character. Eddie. It's so hard to tell because so few people have seen the show, but the people who have seen it, he's getting an, a, a great reaction. So I'm, I'm really excited for people to meet this character. He's sort of, a, he's, he's a metalhead slash dungeon master nerd. This actor, Joe Quinn, who I think everyone we wor who worked with him fell in love with him. Just absolutely incredible. I know everyone's always skeptical if we bring, bring in a new character, but um, I don't think people are going to be upset that we brought in this guy. Upside Down is really coming into our world and the, the events just get more and more horrific as the season goes on. And you'll see here that it's starting to actually really affect some of the characters that we've grown to love and care about. It's a big Max season. Max is in, in, in trouble. I told you she shouldn't have seen that clock and she saw that clock. It's not a good sign. This season, we really get to see more of Eleven's backstory. And you saw there's a young Eleven version there. So we actually go, we are able to, to spend some time in Hawkins' lab in the past. This, and this is before anything we saw in season one. So some of this, this is not right here. This is not a flashback. Earlier, there's a, a shot of her when she's actually younger than she was season one. And so we're seeing events that happened even before the flashbacks in season one with Brenner. So it's, it was exciting for us to be able to go back into Hawkins' lab and really get a sense of what happened there. It's, it's, I mean, it's something we've been wanting to do for a while, which is explore what happened with the other numbers. I mean, that's always been a big question. It's something that everyone, everyone has always been asking us about. So we've been waiting because it's so important. The answer to that is so important. That's why we decided to really dive into it this year. This is a shirtless Steve fighting demo bats in the Upside Down. I don't really think I need to say much more about it than that, except it's badass. And also, well, something we were excited about, one thing we did set out to do this season was we didn't go, get to go into the Upside Down last season at all due to the narrative. And this season, we wanted to really go in there and spend some time there. And so that's something we're super excited about this season. I mean, we spend more time in the Upside Down than any other season. It's not even Well, we're, we, you know, we I think we had to make up for the fact that we didn't go in there in season three. That's right. So we more than made up for it. Um, Absolutely. This year, there's a lot, a lot of time spent in the Upside Down. So here amidst a lot of quick cuts, there's a lot going on. We see Steve underwater, which that's a sequence that we're really excited about. We also see some military. We wanted to get the, the military back as a threat this year. So we're excited about that. And then we're really excited about, and right here we've got Robert England, who you know as Freddy Krueger, a true legend from the world of horror. And we, it was just a dream come true to get him to come and play with us this season. And he plays Victor Creel. And I don't want to give away too much about what role he plays other than to say that it is pivotal and that Robert is really, really incredible. Yeah, he's. In, I think most people only know him, right, from Freddy Krueger, but he's in, He's just an incredible actor. He kind of came to us, it wasn't even, I, I just would never even thought to ask. I would never have thought that he would have been interested in being in the show, but the fact that he came to us in a season that is so deeply inspired by the Nightmare series and by his performance, especially in those movies, it felt like fate. It felt like, okay, this is meant to be. And he was just so generous in sharing his amazing Freddy Krueger stories and just an incredible actor on set. And I don't know, I cannot wait for people to see see him in the show. And here we finally get a really good glimpse of Vecna, who is our, our main villain this season. In one reason we were really excited about this, Matt had mentioned earlier about Pennywise and Freddy Krueger and Pinhead, and that those were the, the monsters that really inspired us this season. But something else we really wanted to do was go back to season one and actually do a monster that we could do mostly practically. And what you're seeing here is 90% 
practical. And Vecna throughout the season is 90% practical. We wanted a presence on set that our actors could really react to, whereas season three, they were just reacting to a beach ball. We wanted something there that we could actually film. And I just think that that makes this villain scarier and more real and tangible. And we're just really excited for people to see him this season. And I should say, so, you know, the con, you know, we worked with our, our concept artist who's, who's brilliant, Michael Marr, to develop the design. And then Barry Gower, who is an amazing makeup artist, did the prosthetic work. I mean, it's a really, it's like a, it's like a work of art. So he, and, and Barry Gower, if you don't know him, he did, he did the Night King for Game of Thrones. He did all of that radiation makeup in Chernobyl. I think that's where we first got wind of him. We're like, who did that work? Because we thought that would be cool for Vecna. When we were just starting to develop ideas for Vecna, I think Chernobyl was coming out or had just come out. And then we found out that he had also done the Night King. And we're like, well, that's perfect because this is some sort of hybrid between the two things. And he's absolutely brilliant. And very, very little enhancement is involved. So it you won't see a ton of close-ups, but the moving vines, that CG, but everything else was there on set. And it's just an actor performing. Well, thank you all for watching this breakdown and uh, we can't wait for you to watch the new season. We hope you think it was worth the wait.